Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is your lecture number five for your course Financial Markets and Institutions. Uh, we are uh, in this particular lecture going to uh, talk about uh, the efficiency of the financial markets and we'll be discussing that how the financial markets achieve uh, or attain efficiency and whether the markets can attain efficiency or not like you know if you think if you look at the, the real markets like say for example in your first econ 101 course uh, when you would have learned about the basic definition of economics the very first definition that you would have learned about economic allocation of resources is that economics is about efficient allocation of resources and economics uh, when you talk about the efficiency of uh, allocation of resources uh, by that efficiency you always mean that you are allocating your resources in such a way that there is no wastage like this concept is very well defined by Pareto. Uh, Pareto defines this allocative efficiency as that you can not make one person better off uh, unless uh, if you are in a situation when you cannot make one person better off unless you make someone else worse off. Uh, this is called the allocative efficient allocation of condition. And this is called efficient allocation because you are allocating all of your resources and if you want to increase the allocation to one person you have to decrease the allocation from the other person so what that would mean that initially you were allocating all of your resources between the people and if you wanted to increase the allocation to one person you had to decrease the allocation to the other person similarly the productive efficiency defined by pareto is that if you want to produce one more uh, uh, one more unit of uh, uh, some uh, good uh, you have to reduce the production of the other goal. Like say, for example, if you remember uh, the production possibility frontier, uh, if you want to move from the point A on production possibility frontier to point B, uh, like say, for example, here you are producing this much X and this much Y. And if you want to increase the production of X, like say, for example, by this much, you will have to reduce the production of Y by this much. So this is what basically is an efficient allocation of resources it's a productive efficiency uh, it is defined by Pareto as that you attain this productive efficiency where you are in a situation when you can not increase the production of one good unless you decrease the production of the other good uh, but what we have observed over the time that like you know this efficiency conditions generally do not hold in the real world like say for example we have studied very ideal models of perfect competition uh, we have studied very different kind of economics uh, like you know ideal uh, models but their applications in the real world are rare we don't find them very much applicable in the real world when we try to find out the efficient allocation of resources in the economies we do not find any economy which is allocating resources uh, like you know uh, completely efficiently there are always vestiges of the resources there is always unemployment there is always recessions there is always depressions there are always crises so that actually is something you know like which is not attainable uh, generally you know like as far as economic efficiency is concerned in this particular lecture we shall first of all look at that what do we mean by the efficiency of the financial markets efficiency the concept of efficiency efficient financial market is different from the efficient allocation of resources given by Pareto we shall be looking at that what do we exactly mean by the efficient allocation of resources efficient efficient financial markets and then we shall see that whether this concept is applicable in the real world or not and to look at this we will have to look at a very strong debate a very famous debate between two Nobel laureates uh, Rob, Bob Schiller and uh, Eugene Farmer we will be looking at their debate and we shall be seeing that like you know what do they say about the efficiency of the financial markets and whether this financial markets can whether the financial markets can attain ever efficiency or not all right so we begin this lecture with some uh, quotations and citations from this uh, great debate uh, between the two titans of uh, finance uh, and they are basically like you know the bob schiller and Eugene Farmer. Now, this is an article written by Justin Fox, and this was published in Harvard Business Review. 
and in this article he has talked about that what the great farmer shiller debate has taught us we are going to learn that what basically we can learn from uh, the debate between eugene farmer and bob shiller about the efficiency of the financial markets if you want to read this whole article you can search this article on your internet and uh, the the they call the, the Howard Business Review every month gives two free articles to everyone, so you can download this article for free initially, and you can read this article in your leisure, like you know. And I would advise you to read these kind of articles for your broader understanding of the subject and broader understanding or broader vocabulary of the the financial terms. Now, uh, if you uh, look at like say for example, would you believe? that the two people in the same field at the same time are sharing a price for the two opposite theories. It is very, very hard to believe in all other sciences, but economics is something, something different or finance is something different. Like, you know, it's about the human behavior and these behaviors are very much contrasting, but somehow this happened in economics in 2013, a Nobel Prize was shared by two great, great economists, and they both basically got the prize for their ideas about the efficiency of the financial market. But what makes this Nobel Prize unique is that that both had 180 degree opposite ideas from each other. Like what Eugene Farmer said, Bob Schiller denied, and what Bob Schiller said Eugene Farmer denied. So it would mean that, like, say, for example, technically, according to simple sciences, if Eugene Farmer was correct, the Bob Scheller could not correct, could not be correct. Similarly, if the Bob Scheller was correct, the Eugene Farmer could not be correct. So this is what something was a kind of a debate. And as this article starts with the same kind of a quotation, that it is really little, it is little hard to imagine a Nobel Prize in physics or another kind of uh, physical sciences being shared a guy famous for advancing a particular hypothesis and a guy famous for relentlessly attacking the hypothesis. They are talking about the market, efficient market hypothesis. One particular person between these two people advanced the concept of efficient market hypothesis and the other people refuted it relentlessly. He said, like, you know, that people are making a big mistake in understanding or uh, believing this particular hypothesis. So these two people were actually uh, far from the different camps, had very different idea about the efficiency of the financial market, but still uh, they were able to get the Nobel Prize for the same kind of a concepts and for the same uh, for the same kind of a, like, you know, year. And if you look at this both individually, like farmer, we are talking about Eugene Farmer. The whole name of the farmer is Eugene Farmer. He got popular with his uh, paper published in Journal of Finance in 1970. The paper was about the efficient capital markets, a review of theory and empirical work. We were talking about the papers of farmer. Fama wrote this paper uh, about the efficient capital markets, a review of theory and empirical work. And uh, uh, in this particular paper, what he did basically, he laid out evidence that stock prices were hard to predict using past behavior. That is, they really followed a random walk. What it would mean that like if you have learned about uh, the two kinds of expectations in your earlier courses, one of the kind of the expectation is called the adaptive expectations and the other kind of expectation is called rational expectations. Uh, adaptive expectation is about adapting the past kind of things for the future. Like when you think that like tomorrow will be as same as the yesterday, or tomorrow will be like, say, for example, if anybody asks you to predict about tomorrow's market, stock market, 
uh, if you say yesterday's performance of the stock market and you just predict that if like you know the econ the market was positive yesterday so it is going to be positive tomorrow as well and similarly if it is uh, no, it was negative yesterday so it is going to be a negative tomorrow as well so that is what something is a kind of adaptive expectations but when you take into account the current information and you just take into account some kind of rational ideas about the things basically that are happening or shaping up today and you then uh, basically predict or expect about the future uh, that is basically called the uh, rational expectations and uh, this basically as the literally you can actually understand by the meanings of it uh, by the rational we mean something with that involves uh, some kind of rationale and some kind of uh, a kind of uh, knowledge about the uh, current uh, things basically and the current information uh, great thank you so uh, this particular paper, like, you know, whatever kind of expectation is this, these expectations are used to predict the future. But, you know, what we have observed over the time, the future events are not forecastable. Like, you know, you cannot foresee what is going to happen tomorrow. This particular concept is called the random walk hypothesis. This random walk hypothesis or the random walk idea has been driven by a walk of a drunkard person. When you look at a person who is drunk, when you when you look at a person walking, like when you look at like a person who is like you know a walking person who is who is drunk, you cannot predict which side he will go and for how long. A drunk person does not walk sensibly. A drunk person does not walk in a particular direction for all the time. He doesn't walk purposely to some direction. What he does, he just goes like you know here and there. He does not have got any particular place to go. He just keeps moving. You cannot predict that which way he is going to end up. So what basically Farmer said in this paper that the, the, the predict that past prices behavior that is really followed a random walk and even information about corporate finance performance and the professional investors generally fail to beat the market. You cannot predict the market. You cannot make extra profits in the market because you cannot predict like, you know, what is going to happen in the market. There is no possibility of predicting that what is going to happen in the market. He suggested taking things a step further and testing whether the stock markets were actually efficient in the sense that it provides accurate signals for resource allocation. And he found out like, you know, that you cannot predict the future market. You cannot beat the market. You cannot beat the market means you cannot make extra profit. You cannot make like, say, for example, you know, who makes extra profit in the financial markets? What do you think? Who can make extra profits in the financial market? So Aisha and, and Roha have talked about this and uh, they are really, you know, like uh, correct to a large extent. Uh, you know, like only those people can make extra profits in the financial markets who have got extra information. If you have got some extra information about some happenings like actually are going to happen. Like say, for example, you are selling because you have got extra information that uh, this stock is going to go down. You are buying some share or some scripts because you have got some extra information that this company's share is going to go up. And other people like you are buying, other people are not buying. You are selling, other people are not selling. You are buying because you have got some information or you are predicting that this particular company is going to make profits or going to make losses. If you assume or you know, for like, you know, if you have got some information that this particular company can make profits in the future, you might buy their shares. And if you assume or you have got some kind of information, some credible information that this company is going to lose money in the future or going to make losses in the future, you will actually sell the shares of that particular company. So this is what happens in the real financial markets that if you have got extra information, everyone plays with the level of information. The people who have got more information are generally better off and they basically make better decisions. They generally get the advantage of less information of other people. Like say, for example, if you are selling some shares and you know that this share, this share is going to make losses in the future, the other person who is buying that share does not have got that information of having this shares going to go into the, the problems or having problems in the future. So it means that like a person who has got more information plays 
with the level of information of the other people. Like say, for example, again, if you are selling some shares, someone else is buying. If you are buying some shares, someone else is selling it. Like say, for example, if you are buying some share with the information that this share is going to make huge profits in the future, and it is going to like, you know, uh, have got, it is going to have got uh, like, you know, it's going to gain some, uh, like it is going to gain some value in the future because of the performance of that share you will be better off like in the future and the person who is selling you the shares will be worse off. So it would mean that the person who is selling has have got like, you know, less information than you do. Uh, Paul Samuelson in 1960s at MIT also authored a paper in which he proved that stock markets would be a random, unpredictable one. So we're talking about the Samuelson. Uh, Samuelson was another guy who thought like, you know, that they are unpredictable or random. When we say random, when we say unpredictable, it means that a person cannot predict what actually is going to happen tomorrow. If you cannot predict what is going to happen tomorrow, you cannot make extra profits. If you do not know what actually will be the market like tomorrow, you cannot make extra profits or you cannot avoid extra losses. That is what actually was the idea of Pharma and Samuelson to some extent, that a person or the markets basically are unpredictable. And these markets are not going like you, you are not predictable in the sense they are random. They cannot be predicted. Like say, for example, those of you who have studied physics uh, or like, you know, uh, they would have studied the random motion of molecules. The molecules move in random directions. You cannot predict their directions. They strike with the walls of a beaker or uh, a cell. Uh, they do not move in, a, in a, some, some sensible direction. They move randomly. So you cannot predict their uh, kind of a direction that which direction these cells are going to go, molecules are going to go in the future. And if you cannot predict that they what which direction they cannot go into the future, you cannot bet on any direction. Up stock market, may you bet on the future. You bet on the future, like say, for example, when you are buying some shares, you are betting that this share is going to gain some value in the future. If you are selling some shares, you are betting, like you know, that this share is going to lose its value in the future. But if you exactly don't know about that, how things are going to be happen tomorrow, so you will not be able to predict, and nobody will be able to predict. So everybody will be the same. All right. So I am trying to make you able to understand this concept of efficiency. Please go with me and try to understand these things with me and try to like, you know, just uh, visualize the things that basically I'm trying to tell you in this particular kind of a lecture. And if you have got any questions, please raise your hand. I'll try to get you uh, like, you know, uh, on board. Uh, but he never thought that the real world would approach this idea like Samuelson's uh, thought about it, but he never believed that the things this are possible. This, but like, you know, the uh, Eugene Fama basically was a great supporter and he basically also assumed and he basically predicted that this is what the real world situation is. Now we talk about the other guy who shared the Nobel Prize with Eugene Fama. He was Bob Schiller. Uh, he actually got his PhD from MIT in 1972. MIT is Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, devised his own test of market efficiency asking in a paper published in the American Economic Review, the most prestigious journal in economics in 1981. And the question was, do stock prices move too much to be justified by subsequent changes in dividends? Do stock prices move too much to be justified by subsequent changes in dividends? His answer, why yes, they do. And uh, uh, you know, like, uh, yes, they do. Like, you know, his answer was, yes, they do. Uh, what actually was his reply for this particular question? And again, if I repeat this question, and I'll try to make sense of this question for you in the upcoming slides, do stock prices move too much? Do stock prices move too much to be justified by subsequent changes in dividends? All right, so it would mean that like, you know, we are just going to get this idea. What Schiller claimed? Schiller claimed that EMH, efficient market hypothesis, was one of the most remarkable errors 
in the theory of economic thought in the history of economic thought i'm sorry so this is the and the in the history of economic thought so schiller re, schiller claimed that emh the efficient market hypothesis was one of the most remarkable errors in the history of economic thought after market crash of 1987 it was widely accepted that yes the stock prices did appear to be much more volatile than the economic and corporate fundamentals that were supposedly reflecting and predicting ah uh, yes so i'm going to go to it like you know say for example if you go back to the slide again Uh, the question was do stock prices move too much to be justified like you know what actually like say for example the shiller and samuelson basically had the view of that the future movements cannot be predicted future movements are random so everybody is the same but what shiller basically had the point that these all movements can be can be predicted okay all right देखिए ये जो शिलर एक्चुअली उसका जो पॉइंट था कि जो प्राइसेस मूव टू मच टू बी जस्टिफाइड बाय सब्सिक्वेंट चेंजेस इन डिविडेंड्स जो डिविडेंड्स हैं जो लोगों को फायदा मिलता है वो प्राइसेस उसकी वजह से मूव करते हैं प्राइसेस मूव करने का मतलब ये होता है देखिए किसी स्टॉक मार्केट के प्राइसेस जब किसी कोई स्टॉक होता है उसके प्राइसेस कब इंक्रीज करते हैं वेन पीपल बाय देम और उसके प्राइसेस कब डिक्रीज करते हैं वेन पीपल सेल दैम और दैट इज वॉट लाइक जो मूवमेंट होती है इसकी बेसिस पे ही पता चलता है कि फ्यूचर के डिविडेंड्स क्या होंगे फ्यूचर के डिविडेंड्स होने का मतलब क्या है कि फ्यूचर में उसका प्रॉफिट है या फ्यूचर में उसका लॉस है यू कैन नॉट बेसिकली यू नो लाइक दैट्स वॉट बेसिकली वॉज द आइडिया द बेसिक इन द नट शेल द आइडिया ऑफ द शेलर वॉज दैट द मार्केट कैन बी प्रोडक्टेड एंड दे आर बेसिकली यू नो लाइक हैविंग अ काइंड ऑफ लाइक यू नो दैट समथिंग दैट यू कैन यू कैन यू कैन बीट द मार्केट or you can basically like you know you can get certain information from the market which can uh, basically direct you or guide you something about the future uh, we will be discussing about this now first of all when you look at this definition of efficient market hypothesis the efficient market hypothesis is the theory supporting the notion that market prices are in fact fair they are not unfair unfair happens like say for example dekhe market prices unfair kab honge misal ke taur par mere paas ye information hai ek aisi information mere paas hai ke is market is share ki company ke jo value hai wo badhne wali hai ab ye information mere paas hai lekin ye information market mein abhi tak nahi aayi to iska matlab hai ki abhi tak market mein wo jo share hai अंडर वैल्यूड है जिस तरह मिसाल के तौर पर अगर आपको ये पता चले कि एक कंपनी है एबीसी उस कंपनी एबीसी में प्रॉफिट होने वाला है अब जब तक वो प्रॉफिट की न्यूज मार्केट में आएगी नहीं जब तक उस शेयर की वैल्यू कम होगी लेकिन जैसे ही वो प्रॉफिट की न्यूज मार्केट में आएगी उस शेयर की वैल्यू बढ़ जाएगी उस शेयर की वैल्यू क्यों बढ़ेगी क्योंकि जाहिर है कि अगर उनको ये पता लगेगा कि इस कंपनी में प्रॉफिट हो रहा है या इस कंपनी में प्रॉफिट होने वाला है तो हर कोई उस कंपनी के शेयर को बाय करेगा और जब उस कंपनी के शेयर की डिमांड बढ़ेगी और सप्लाई ज्यादा नहीं बढ़ेगी तो ऐसी सूरत में जो है वो उसके शेयर प्राइसेस बढ़ जाएंगे अगर ये इन्फॉर्मेशन पहले से मार्केट में मौजूद नहीं होगी तो इसका मतलब होगा अगर मिसाल तो ये इन्फॉर्मेशन है और ये मौजूद नहीं है मार्केट में लोगों को पता नहीं है यह इन्फॉर्मेशन है कि कंपनी में प्रॉफिट होने वाला है लेकिन ये इन्फॉर्मेशन मार्केट में मौजूद नहीं है अगर लोगों को ये बात पता है अगर ये ये इन्फॉर्मेशन है कि प्रॉफिट होने वाला है और लोगों को ये बात पता नहीं है तो जिस मार्केट जिस प्राइस पे वो शेयर ट्रेड कर रहे होंगे वो जाहिर असल प्राइस से कम होंगे मिसाल के तौर पर मैं जो एक शेयर मेरे पास एक शेयर है सौ रुपए का और वो मुझे ये बात नहीं पता कि इस कंपनी के अंदर प्रॉफिट होने वाला है और मुझे ये बात नहीं पता कि इस शेयर का प्राइसेस जो है वो एक सौ बीस होने वाली है फ्यूचर में तो मैं उसको सौ रुपए का बेचूंगा ये इसलिए बेचूंगा सौ रुपए का क्योंकि आपके पास मेरे पास वो इन्फॉर्मेशन मौजूद नहीं है अब असल में इसका जो फेयर प्राइस है वो एक सौ है लेकिन मैं बेच रहा हूं उसको सौ रुपए में मैं क्यों बेच रहा हूं इसको सौ रुपए में क्योंकि मेरे पास ये इन्फॉर्मेशन मौजूद नहीं है कि इस कंपनी के प्रॉफिट्स की न्यूज आने वाली है और ये कंपनी जो है वो अच्छा परफॉर्म करने वाली है और इसके अच्छी परफॉर्मेंस की वजह से इस कंपनी के शेयर्स की डिमांड बढ़ जाएगी और शेयर्स की डिमांड बढ़ने की वजह से इसके प्राइसेस जो है वो बढ़ जाएंगे 
अगर मेरे पास ये इन्फॉर्मेशन मार्केट में मौजूद नहीं है लेकिन ये इन्फॉर्मेशन कहीं ना कहीं एग्जिस्ट करती है तो इसका मतलब ये होगा कि वो जो प्राइस है मार्केट में वो फेयर नहीं है बिल्कुल इसी तरीके से अगर किसी कंपनी में कोई लॉस की न्यूज है लेकिन वो लॉस की न्यूज है लेकिन वो मार्केट में न्यूज मौजूद नहीं है इट इज गोइंग टू बी लाइक यू नो फॉर्म इज गोइंग टू हैव लॉसेज इन द फ्यूचर बट नो बडी इन द मार्केट नोज अबाउट दोज लॉसेज अब मिसाल के तौर पर मैं एक शेयर खरीद रहा हूँ सौ रुपए का मुझे वो शेयर सौ रुपए का नहीं खरीदना चाहिए क्योंकि फ्यूचर में या फौरी तौर पर जैसे ही वो न्यूज आएगी इस शेयर की वैल्यू जो है वो सत्तर रुपए अस्सी रुपए या नब्बे रुपए हो जाएगी मैं सौ रुपए का शेयर असल वैल्यू से ज्यादा खरीद रहा हूँ मैं आई एम जस्ट बाइंग एन ओवर वैल्यूड शेयर वाई आई एम बाइंग ओवर वैल्यूड शेयर बिकॉज द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट शुड हैव कम इन द मार्केट हैज नॉट कम येट so this efficient market hypothesis under the emh security prices fully and fairly reflect all available information about the security if the markets are efficient the prices of the shares scripts in the market represent or actually incorporate all available information fully and fairly there is no hidden information there is no extra analysis that can get you more profit or less profit so it is something you know like that is a quite a simple straight forward definition of efficient market hypothesis since 1960s the emh has been perhaps the most important paradigm in finance there are mixed findings about the efficiency of the financial markets though uh, people basically some of the people believe that the markets are efficient and some of the people don't believe that the markets are efficient like say for example right now the students were asking is it possible that the markets be efficient is it possible that the people have got perfect level of information and yes the answer can be both yes and no uh, for some the answer is yes for some the answer is no for some the answer of the like the answer for the question that can the market be efficient ever the answer is yes for so many the answer is no they don't think that the markets can be efficient because of so many reasons and that's what basically is the main debate between pharma and shiller pharma believes that the markets are efficient and uh, shiller believes the markets are not efficient pharma believes that all the information are there in the market you that shiller believes that all information are not there in the market because there have been so many crises bahut sare crises aaye hain duniya mein अगर सारी की सारी इंफॉर्मेशन मौजूद हो तो कोई क्राइसिस ना आए अगर सारी की सारी इंफॉर्मेशन मौजूद हो तो कोई भी शख्स लूज ना करे पैसे जिस अगर आप देखें 2007, 2008 का फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस आया इससे पहले 1987 में फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस आया इससे पहले जो है वो 2000, थाउजेंड में जो है वो फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस आया जो कि इकोनॉमिक डिप्रेशन की सूरत अख्तियार कर गया अगर सबके पास इन्फॉर्मेशन हो दैट इज अ क्वेश्चन बेसिकली शिलर आस्क that if everybody has got the same level of information if everybody has got the same access to information that why everybody like you know anybody loses money aap dekhe agar sabke paas information perfect ho agar mere paas bhi information perfect ho aapke paas bhi information perfect ho to na to main paise lose karunga na aap paise lose karenge na to aap galat cheez khareedenge na main galat cheez khareedunga na future mein mujhe nuksan hoga na aapko nuksan hoga isra misal ke taur par if you take another example of the real estate market real estate market mein agar aap kisi aisi property koi khareedte hain jo ke sahi nahi hai jiske prices low ho jayenge future mein ya jiske upar jo hai wo technically aur legally jo hai wo society sahi nahi hai jahan pe agar aap makan khareedenge to future mein that can be taken over and that can be demolished as if for example the nasla tower tower has been demolished by the uh, supreme court because that was uh, constructed illegally like you know at an illegal place and do with the illegal kind of procedures so you cannot if you don't have got the information you will be losing money in the future if you don't have got information you will be actually making the wrong decisions if you have got don't have got the information uh, you will be actually ending up on the losses and that's what happens during the crisis if everyone according to the shilla had got the same information you cannot uh, you will not be able to uh, you won't be losing the money आप बिल्कुल इन्फॉर्मेशन को वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू से ये इन्फॉर्मेशन को हाइड करने का जी बिल्कुल इन्फॉर्मेशन हाइड की जाती है इन्फॉर्मेशन बहुत सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन आर नॉट गिवन बिकॉज देखें अगर वो इन्फॉर्मेशन तो मेरे पास एक इन्फॉर्मेशन है इन्फॉर्मेशन इज माई वेपन अगर मेरे पास जो स्टॉक मार्केट में जो सबसे बड़ा स्ट्रॉन्ग वेपन है आपके लिए वो क्या है आपकी इन्फॉर्मेशन You fight with that information. With that information. अगर मेरे पास इन्फॉर्मेशन है और मैं आपके साथ उसको शेयर कर दू तो क्या होगा
जी बताइएगा अगर मेरे पास जो इन्फॉर्मेशन वो सबके पास चली जाए तो क्या होगा सर ये होगा कि आपको प्रॉफिट में भी कम हो सकता है और रेलिटिवली जी मुझे उसका कोई फायदा नहीं होगा ना इन्फॉर्मेशन का मुझे उस इन्फॉर्मेशन का कोई फायदा नहीं होगा देखिए मिसाल के तौर पर मुझे ये बात पता है कि एक शेयर जो है वो उसकी वैल्यू गिरने वाली है अगर ये इन्फॉर्मेशन मैं सबको बता दूं तो कोई भी मुझे जो है वो जो है वो उसको जो है वो मुझसे नहीं खरीदेगा ऐसा ही होगा ना मिसाल के तौर पर एक शेयर है मेरे पास वो शेयर बहुत सारे पड़े हुए हैं और मुझे ये बात इन्फॉर्मेशन है कि उस शेयर की वैल्यू गिरने वाली है अगर ये इन्फॉर्मेशन सबके पास हो तो कौन खरीदेगा मुझसे वो शेयर कोई नहीं खरीदेगा जी कोई नहीं खरीदेगा इसलिए नहीं खरीदेगा क्योंकि जाहिर है कोई भी जो है वो जान बूझ के लॉसेस को नहीं अबेयर करेगा तो मैं इस इन्फॉर्मेशन को हाइड कर सकता हूँ बहुत सारे लोग इस इन्फॉर्मेशन को हाइड करते हैं बहुत सारे लोग इन्फॉर्मेशन को जो है वो छुपाते हैं बहुत सारे लोग इन्फॉर्मेशन के साथ प्ले करते हैं इस तरह मिसाल के तौर पर अगर आपको इस तरह स्टूडेंट्स में होता है बाजों का कि आपको ये पता चलता है कहीं पर जॉब आई है और वो इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको मिलती है तो आप क्या कर देंगे उसको आप इस इन्फॉर्मेशन को शेयर करेंगे या हाइड करेंगे हाइड करेंगे <laughs> जो एक ह्यूमन इंस्टिंक्ट है जी जी बिल्कुल डिपेंड करता है लेकिन देखें जनरली देखें अगर आपको पता है कि आपके चांसेस हैं और अगर कोई और जाएगा तो उसको चांस मिल जाएगा तो यू मे हाइड इट यू मे हाइड इट और ये देखें बेसिकली दिस इज ह्यूमन नेचर अब ये इन्फॉर्मेशन हाइड करने का मकसद क्या है कि इफ यू नो दैट दिस इज अ जॉब लाइक यू नो देर इज अ वेकेंसी इनटू दिस काइंड ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड यू हैव गॉट सम इंफॉर्मेशन यू कैन हाइड दैट इंफॉर्मेशन सो सो दैट यू कुड इंप्रूव योर चांसेस ऑफ गेटिंग द जॉब ठीक है ना लेकिन जाहिर है कि ये एक दैट इज अ सेपरेट थिंग कि आपको पता है कि जो दुनिया में जो सक्सेसफुल तरीन लोग हैं उनका एक फार्मूला है विन विन फार्मूला यू कैन ओनली विन इफ ऑल अदर पीपल अलोंग विद यू आर आल्सो विनिंग अगर आप ये चाहते हैं कि आप विन कर जाएं और सारे के सारे लूज कर जाएं तो ऐसा नहीं हो सकता अगर आप ये चाहते हैं कि आप भी विन करें आप विन करें तो आपको दूसरे लोगों की भी विनिंग स्ट्रेटेजीज बनानी पड़ेगी आपको सबको एक साथ लेके चलना पड़ेगा अगर इस सोसाइटी में अगर इस माशरे में पाकिस्तान में मैं चाहता हूँ कि मैं सबसे अच्छा कमा सकूँ और सबसे ज्यादा सेफ रह सकूँ और सबके सब लोग खराब हों और सबके सब लोगों के पास जो है वो उनकी हालत खराब हो तो मेरी हालत भी अच्छी नहीं रह सकती जिस तरह मिसाल के तौर पर अगर कोई पॉलिटिकल पार्टी है वो ये चाहती है कि मेरा फायदा हो और पूरे मुल्क का फायदा ना हो तो इवेंचुअली उनका नुकसान होगा क्योंकि मुल्क का नुकसान उनका नुकसान तो दिस इज डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग लेकिन बहरहाल ये कि ये एक ऐसी बात मेरे जहन में आई तो आई एम जस्ट शेयर इट विद यू नाउ दिस इज एन आर्टिकल बाय स्टीफन स्टीफन एल जोन्स एंड जेफरी एम नेटर एफिशिएंट कैपिटल मार्केट्स नाउ लुक एट दिस इंफॉर्मेशन इन दिस आर्टिकल ही सेस जी प्लीज सर अभी आपने बोला कि विन विन सिचुएशन होती है कि अगर आप विन करना चाहते हो तो आप जो सामने वाले हों बाकी पर्सन हो तो वो भी विन करें ठीक है तो जो शेयर मार्केट में फिर हम ऐसे तो शेयर मार्केट में भी हम इन्फॉर्मेशन अगर प्रोवाइड करेंगे तो हम जीतेंगे तो बाकी लोग भी जीतेंगे जी जी बिल्कुल ऐसे ही जी जी बिल्कुल ऐसा ही है देखिये ये असल में जो फेयर प्राइसेज होते हैं ना दे बेनिफिट एवरी बारह लेकिन ये कि ये ये फॉर्मूला आप बहुत सारी जगह पे जो है वो इसको लगाने के लिए आपको एहतियात करनी पड़ेगी आ, लेकिन ये कि बारह लिए कि ये आ, वैसे इट्स टेक्निकली करेक्ट कि आप अगर देखें फेयर प्राइसेस होंगे तो एवरीबॉडी लाइक देखें अगर मिसाल के तौर पर आप आज किसी के लिए लॉसेस क्रिएट कर रहे हैं तो ये लॉस आपको भी तो हो सकता है ना फ्यूचर में अनुषा स्टॉक मार्केट में अगर आपकी कोई सर तो आप एक जगह एक जगह आप कह रहे हैं कि हाइट करना चाहिए एक जगह आप कह रहे हैं कि नहीं 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 मैं तो देखें हाइट मैं मैंने बिल्कुल भी नहीं कहा कि हाइट करना चाहिए नहीं नहीं मैंने बिल्कुल भी नहीं कहा हाइट करना चाहिए नहीं नहीं आप बिल्कुल मक्का फाते हैं देखिये मैं बिल्कुल भी नहीं कह रहा की हाइट करना चाहिए वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू टेल यू इज के जनरली वॉट है पीपल बेसिकली यू नो लाइक कैन हाइड इन्फॉर्मेशन ये जो सवाल उन्होंने किया था इफ यू लुक एट द क्वेश्चन बेसिकली स्टूडेंट हैज आस्क उस तो अजीम हैज आस्क कि क्या कोई इन्फॉर्मेशन को हाइट भी कर रखा जाता है तो गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से या प्राइवेट प्रोडक्शन की तरफ से जी बिल्कुल हाइट मैंने कहा कि हाइट कर सकते हैं लोग अगर वो अपनी इन्फॉर्मेशन से फायदा उठाना चाहते हैं तो लेकिन ये कोई आपके पास कोई सजेस्टिव चीज नहीं है कि आपको हाइट करना चाहिए या मैं बेसिकली आपको ना सजेस्ट ये कर रहा हूँ कि हाइट करना चाहिए ना मैं ये सजेस्ट कर रहा हूँ कि आपको जो है वो आपको उसको शेयर करना चाहिए लेकिन इन्फॉर्मेशन मार्केट में शेयर होती है आपके एक्शन के साथ शेयर होती है मिसाल के तौर पर अगर मैं आई एम बाइंग समथिंग तो इसका मतलब है कि मेरे पास कोई इन्फॉर्मेशन है अगर मैं स्ट्रॉन्ग बायर हूँ या मैं एक बड़ा बायर हूँ और आई एम बाइंग समथिंग तो लोग मुझे देख के बाय करना शुरू कर देंगे 
इफ आई एम सेलिंग समथिंग लोग मुझे देख के सेल करना शुरू कर देंगे ये बेसिकली इन्फॉर्मेशन लोगों के पास डिसिमिनेट होती है और लोग इस बारे में देर देर आई ब्राउज आर रेज बेसिकली देर वाई दिस पर्सन इज डूइंग दिस सो दे ट्राई टू गेट द इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड समाउ दे गेट दिन समाउ दे एक्चुअली चेंज दियर वेज तो अनुषा बेसिकली आई एम नॉट एक्चुअली गेटिंग एनी सजेस्टिव अबाउट के वेदर यू शुड हाइड इन्फॉर्मेशन और शेयर इन्फॉर्मेशन आई वॉज जस्ट टेलिंग द ह्यूमन बिहेवियर it generally people can hide information as well but hiding is not uh, like you know efficient according to the finance actually way, sir mera khayal hai uh we're talking about this article efficient capital markets written by by stephen l jones and jeffrey m netter now look at this this is what basically perhaps will explain your concerns as well like this particular article says in the united states reliable information about firm is relatively cheap to obtain partly due to moderate disclosure and partly due to technology information provision you know like in in the us majority of the people have got access to internet majority of the people are literate majority of the people have got understanding uh, understanding uh, of the things so they basically are better informed it means that the markets in the united states are more efficient than the markets anywhere else like say for example if you talk about pakistan and if you talk about pakistani investor the pakistani investors generally who invest in the markets are not very literate at the first place and they don't have got everybody does not have got very good access to internet and even if you have got access to internet we don't have got ability to understand and give meaning to every information and secondly the problem with our companies is also that they don't disclose every information they don't provide all the information and whatever the information they provide is generally in the like you know is very vague and it's not very very like you know uh, quite uh, uh, quite clear so the people don't get any idea about what exactly is happening in those markets for those reasons us security markets are thought to be relatively efficient so you know that this efficiency can be relatively more and less as well like you know depending on that how good information is available and what kind of uh, uh, people actually are trading into that particular kind of a markets so now the whole idea of the efficiency of like efficiency of financial market revolves around information the more information are available in the market the more efficient markets are so the information efficiency of stock prices matters in two main ways first investors care about whether various trading strategies can earn them excess return can they beat the market the okay? information people need to beat the market and by beating the market we mean ke log jo hai wo 10% kama rahe hain aur aap 12% kamaye 15% kamaye iska matlab hota hai ki aap market ko बीट कर रहे हैं मार्केट को बीट करने का मतलब है कि एवरेज रिटर्न मार्केट में 10 परसेंट है लेकिन आप 12 परसेंट कमा रहे हैं और आप 12 परसेंट क्यों कमा रहे हैं वाई डू यू थिंक एनी बडी कैन अर्न ट्वेल्व परसेंट वेन द मार्केट इज अर्निंग टेन परसेंट प्रॉफिट वेरी गुड यू हैव गॉट एक्स्ट्रा इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन कैन हेल्प यू get the extra money and you can beat the market of course roa says because of extra information one has and that is correct so secondly if stock prices accurately reflect all information new investment capital goes to the highest value use you know like uh, i think this is a win win situation for everyone if the information are available everywhere and if the information is the same everywhere so you can actually invest the stocks at the very the best place because you know that which share is good which share is bad which share is giving what return so you can always invest your shares at the very high valued you know like uh, uh, investments so john burr williams in 1938 in his work on intrinsic value argues that stock prices are based on economic fundamentals the alternative view is uh, explained by keynes do you know keynes uh, you must know keynes because uh, this is the guy who introduced this macroeconomics and perhaps you also know keynes because of his idea of animal spirits you know what keynes said like say for example if you compare the keynesian view with the classical view the classicals assumed economic economic agents to be rational but what keynes said that the person or the economic agent you talk about in the classical models who is rational is not really rational he is an emotional being he is a physical he is a person who actually is affected by his desires 
his wants his emotions and he is actually having some kind of spirits which he named as animal spirit like say for example the classicals assumed that economic agents are rational whereas the keynes assumed that the economic agents are not rational if the everyone was rational if everyone was doing in his best of interests there would not have been any crisis there would not have been any problem in the markets because everyone would have been getting uh, the same like you know uh, the the everyone would have been taking the right decision and if everyone takes the right decision the market does not go in array the market does not go into the uh, like you know losses so in keynesian's view stock prices are based more on speculation he said the markets do not behave very well there are always speculations involved there are always speculations involved and do you understand the speculations do you people understand okay so finally we are on this uh, chapter's preview how information in the market affects securities prices and expectations are very important in a financial system expectations of returns risks liquidity impact asset demand inflationary expectations impact bond prices expectations not only affect our understanding of markets but also how financial institutions operate to better understand expectations we examine the efficient market hypothesis framework for understanding what information is useful and what is not however we need to validate the hypothesis with the real market data and the at best the results are mixed you don't have got any clear cut uh, like you know understanding of it whether the financial market hypothesis exists or or not in summary we will look at the basic reasoning behind the efficient market hypothesis we will also examine the empirical evidence examining this idea the topics in this particular chapter will be including uh, the efficient market hypothesis evidence on the efficient market hypothesis and behavioral finance